everybody. Welcome to Signals from the Frontline, your every Wednesday live broadcast brought to you by Frontline Gaming. We're your host, Kicker, the chief of Serial, an FLG insider. Uh, we don't have Shelby, the hobby guru tonight, the most effervescent player in 40K. She's taking a break. And I'm Reese, your competitive correspondent. Not really. It's actually set the mad doc, guys. Um, Seth, but, uh, did you hurt yourself? I mean, geez, yeah, man, yeah. are you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, what you've been up to? Oh uh, man, well I I've been very much entertained by uh, your recent impersonation there, um, Seth. I just got back to civilization. I have internet, which is wonderful. I've been out roaming uh, across the the frontier <laughs> and getting to hang out with bison and whatnot, uh, and just being a wild man for a little while. But it is nice. Oh, apparently, I, did I just grow a mustache? I think I just grew a mustache. You did. You did grow a mustache. <laughs> the, the recent impersonation was so on point; it forced mustache growth. Yes. Th thank you our wonderful producer Richard in the background uh, making weird things happen to my face. I, I appreciate it. So if you are listening to this podcast, you can be watching this podcast live every Wednesday uh, on Twitch where you get to see me apparently grow facial hair, hair spontaneously. Uh, Seth, you have had a very exciting weekend as well. What, what have you been up to? Uh, yeah, I went to Charity Hammer, which was fantastic, but also exhausting. Um, from from th I got up 3 a.m. Thursday to leave to get there, and I didn't get back home until 7.30 in the morning on Monday, and in between the two, I slept 15 hours. Dude, um, dude. So it was it was quite the, uh, quite wow. the time. We, we, we did a lot of great, and we'll get into that later, but I'm still tired. <laughs> yeah, man, that's rough. Yeah, and yeah. you're back to like a normal work week, right? Like you're just... Uh... Yeah, I, I went back to work Tuesday. I slept most <laughs> of Monday, and I went back to work Tuesday. Oh my so, gosh. And you got to like tell your colleagues, like, yeah, I was up like doing this weird thing all weekend trying to explain yeah when you tell them you raise money for kids though they kind of like oh, okay whatever <laughs> it's okay it's okay have some more coffee it's yeah. okay cool man well uh hey well i want to share a little bit what's going on in the industry there's not that many model releases but we do have one very important one and that is the emperor's champion Ooh, sexy I always, model, I always right? love that model and the Dude. newer one Dude, I was going to buy the old model just because I liked it so much, but the new one's like, whoa, this this is this is a sexy model. Um, of course, this means that Black Templars are on the horizon. Um, it also is interesting because Emperor's Champion, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Seth, but he's a Primaris model, right? I mean, it's cool. I mean, do we know I, this? Is it confirmed? I, I mean, he looks, he, looks, he looks the scale of a Primaris. Now, yeah. the, um, the gist of the lore always behind the Emperor's Champion was like the night before a battle, you know, the, someone would kind of be hit with the spirit of the Emperor and yeah, yeah. the chaplain would be like, you are the champion tomorrow. And they'd check him out in the armor. So I don't see why you couldn't have a Primaris be like hit with the spirit of the Emperor. And they're like, uh, get, get the bigger armor for that guy. He <laughs> looks bigger. <laughs> Well, and, 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 you know, I mean, this is GW lore and, you know, they can adjust it as needed to make sure that we can have Primaris and first yeah. champions, whether it's um, traditional or not. Um, on that same note, let's move right along. Guys, uh, we know that the Kill Team pre-order is up right now for two weeks. What's the news, though, is, is what's like the really interesting thing here is that everyone is guaranteed guaranteed a box like if you pre-order your box you're gonna get a box this is this is amazing i mean this should hopefully become the norm moving forward i i know that a lot of people yeah. get butthurt when they can't get their super duper limited edition limited edition box set i mean this includes me i was extremely disappointed to miss out on a few boxes uh earlier this year but guess what now it seems like suddenly i will be promised a, a box set even no matter what like it, even if this is the best selling box set of all time i'm still gonna get one um that's amazing. I'm I'm very happy about this. I think that that's a that's a great decision because they've done made to orders like box sets for Indominus, um, and everyone really wanted them to do Curse City. And I don't know if there was a big call for the Beast Snaggle box, but there's always been kind of those calls of like, you know, hey, we're sorry we didn't get it to you. Well, you know, and that was always after the fact, after people kind of already maybe panic yeah, bought stuff. That's the thing. So after the fact. it's it's very nice they're announcing, hey, we're going to do this up front. So. If you we're gonna we're gonna fulfill all the orders. It might take a few months because we might have to actually print more copies of this box, but we're gonna get it to you. So that's that's good to know up front because it kind of takes some of the FOMO out of it. And I always yeah. have the FOMO about and, these kind of things. And Seth, you know me pretty well. We're friends, but I don't know if all of our you know listeners know that I get a little uh, anxious and stressed out about this stuff, and I, yeah. I and I can't sleep at night. Like I'm like, am I gonna get the box? Am I gonna get the box? Is gonna sell out? Do I have to wake up early? Do I have to get like all my friends to try and help get me a box? Now suddenly I don't have to be all stressed out about some stupid plastic toys. I can just know that. 
come uh, two weeks from uh, a week from this Saturday, two weeks from this Saturday, I can get my brand new uh, pre-order in and know that I'm actually getting a box. So that makes yeah. me really happy. And you know what, dude? It doesn't lead to all these box breakers and and scalpers and. and I mean, whatnot, if someone you know? wants to send me sell me some more of that terrain, though, I. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> do, do, I do, 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 do. Of that. I'm asking all my friends in Louisiana. Hey, if you don't want your uh, your kill team terrain, uh, I will take it off your hands. Yeah, because um, that's quirky goodness right there. <laughs> Um, oh, dude, and uh, of course, the new Grey Knight Thousand Suns box is yep. up for pre-order. Hexfire? Hex yeah, Hexfire. Hex Hexfireness. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds a little, you know, witchy and, and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Hexfire, yeah. whatever. But, uh, you know, and the Codex, which is kind of a nice refresher that we will be getting Codexes at the same time that models are coming out. Because that that's, I know, something that still people are a little frustrated yeah. is that you can't get the Orc Codex yet. You can get the Beast Naga box. Um, and you can't so get anyway. all the models yet, for, even if you got the Codex. Dude, you're right. Yeah, I still want that uh, Squigasaur thing, but eventually, eventually. I think we're looking at October, right? Is that a thing? That's the rumor. We'll see. That's the rumor. We'll see. Nothing confirmed. We'll nothing see. confirmed. So th there's no new rules that have been released or nothing too exciting on that front. Um, so we're just going to jump right into the Frontline Gaming Company news. Guys, um, we have added a lot of events for SoCal. Uh, previously, if you've been to SoCal in the past, it was really just 40K, some Age of Sigmar, a little kill team on the side. But now we're really just going full throttle in and adding a lot more events. There's a 40K friendly, there's an Age of Sigmar doubles, there's you know all that stuff. But then we've gone in and there and really added Star Wars Legion, X-Wing, Armada. I think, oh, there is going to be Marvel Crisis Protocol. And I'm currently being asked to add in uh, Monster Apocalypse and Moncop. It's a it's another it's a privateer press game. I I don't know, but it looks like it's a TO. One. yeah. It's, it's it's like you know King Kong style, you know versus Godzilla in a city. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's a fun game. I've I've not played it, but it looks like one of privateer press's like more newer games. It seems to get a little bit more traction. But the point is that we're gonna have this. Um, I'm really excited to see Marvel Crisis Protocol just because I know that's been uh that's been getting a lot of traction recently. So yeah, that should it, be it's, it's taken off at the local store where I'm at. So it's definitely a very exciting thing yeah. to see kind of hop into the the scene. Yeah, it's it's so it's so, so so it's nice. So we'll have of course. 40k the champs and you know the 40k rtt and, and the 40k, 40K and the <laughs> champs and the friendly man. but dude but dude like honestly whether it's x-wing or 40k just having a bunch of people in the hall excited to be playing a tabletop game just creates so much positive like mojo in the hall yeah. i don't know it, it makes it a lot of fun um but you know what's kind of cool too though is that um this, the 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 the, the X-wing players and the star wars legion players in particular have been so um how do i say this delicately have been very uh, adamant and very uh, focused on getting certain prize support and swag, uh, and that we've decided to to cater to them. That we're going to actually be probably uh, we're going to be trying to roll that out to 40k players as well. So while hmm. people already like a lot of the things that we've been doing in the past, uh, look for SoCal to be an event where we start to really add even better, cooler stuff. Purely because these Star Wars folks have been asking, well, demanding it. Uh, so we figured if we're going to make it for them, we'll Give make us it our swag or else. Hey, dude, seriously, it's like the ac acrylic tokens they love and, and whatnot. Well, oh, yeah. we're going to try and make some stuff like that for, for 40K. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it should be fun. I mean, what's your favorite piece of swag you ever got, Seth, from any event you've ever gone to? Like, do you have something that you just truly cherished? I'll show you I later. You show me later. All right, cheese. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, uh, guys, we do have some news regarding the Las Vegas team tourney that is coming up. We have over 400 players already uh, signed up. Uh, and I'm pleased to announce that we will be releasing. I think we just released, like just released, a few more spots. We were able to adjust our layout to bring in a few more uh, teams to come play. So if you want to come to the Las Vegas team tournament, jump on those tickets immediately. Nice. Uh, we're not adding any more after this. This is it. Like. We I, we try to squeeze tables in, try to make it work, uh, but uh, yeah, right. You know, it's 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 gonna be big. There's like I said, there's already 400 player, over 400 players uh, signed up for it. So this so is there. your chance to try to take me down. I'm gonna yeah. be there, folks. You're gonna be there. Who, who, who's on your team again, man? You got a you got a oh, few people. Man, I've I've got I've got the a stacked team. You got the stacked it's team. A, it's myself, um, yeah. another FLGN uh, alumnus, uh, John Quinnell. Yeah, um, and Green then we've got uh, Zach and Peter, uh, both kind of the uh, the, nor the Northwestern crew, okay. and then headed off by the mighty Mitch Pelham. Ooh, oh, dude, Mitch from a uh, Biff Pod, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. We're nice, bringing nice. the heat. Our goal is to bring down the number one Biff Pod team, which is the rest <laughs> of the people from their podcast. <laughs> Wait, are you like the B team or the A team? Like, what? what We're what not we? calling ourselves the B all right, team. All right, all right, all right, all right. That was that was deemed offensive. Oh, uh, sorry, I mean, by, yes. by Colin actually. Yeah. So we're we're team small blood. Okay, no, I, I love and it. You, I love it. You don't need to know what that means. It's 
perfectly fine. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, talking about terrain um, is really important because this has been coming up a lot on our community uh, group page. Um, guys, the Lone Star Open used a new format that the ITC created, uh, which we're lovingly calling our player optimized terrain. We don't want people to be confused uh, with our, you know, the previous term player place terrain of, you know, the, the old player, play, uh, pro, can't speak, the old player pro, placed terrain. There we go. That's why they can't say it. Um, yeah. Of old, which many people seem to be thinking is. Uh, there's far more structure in this new form. Um, in player-optimized terrain, each player is only placing terrain in their side of the table, and there's several other requirements that really help um, uh, make it as balanced as possible. You can read all about it in the packets. We're going to be constantly updating these packets. But uh, the Las Vegas team tournament should be using this as well, and of course SoCal will be using this as well. The reason we're doing this player-optimized terrain now is, is purely because it's been extremely well-received by the players that were actually at the event uh, at Lone Star Open. The people actually, the event absolutely loved the way the terrain rules worked. And uh, and because of this, we're going to try and roll it out at all of our other events for the rest of the year. Um, it just seems to really make it more balanced regardless of what armor you're playing and what armor you're playing against. Um, and it basically lets people create their ideal deployment zone. Um, yeah. Seth, yep. have you tried this yet? Have you played our player optimized terrain? I've I have played uh, player optimized terrain in in other systems, but not uh, y'all's format. I really want to. I just uh, I don't I don't own a full set of FLG terrain. People, okay. I'm sorry. I, I know someone that can help you. Let me help okay. you. With that. Okay. Now Let's now I would be it. remiss. Um, I love I love FLG guys. Obviously, I uh, I help them out with the show. But I've got to I've got to mention this because it came up in chat. The right, abbreviation shoot. for player optimized terrain is pot. <laughs> so you can say I love pot. I love pot. I love pot. I I, I think that's okay. That's okay. Hey, I think it's yeah. it, it's very in vogue right now. Pot is cool. All right, let's yep. do it. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so players if you really enjoy your experience at flg events you can just be like man i really just wish we could have some pot at my local events <laughs> i think, I think ask, it's great. ask your tos for pot i'm sure it'll go down fine yeah. don't worry <laughs> yeah. about it but uh yeah so the new terminology uh without us realizing with the <laughs> So um, pot the the player optimized terrain will be uh will be the the new terminology used yeah. so purely because people don't seem it's it's like the people that don't come to events that hear that we're using player place terrain think it's the old school player place terrain yeah, which no. it is and far from. It, it's very important to understand with this system because I have theory hammered a lot of it yeah. um and 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 done a little practicing just with my terrain yeah um it's really important for this for you to remember when you're talking about the system. You know what your deployment zone is. You know exactly. what your table half is. You know what you know what mission you're playing. So you know where your army wants to go, at least up to the midway point. Exactly. So even if you're if you're if you're trying to you know if your opponent's a super shooty army, you know okay, I need to make sure I've got this piece of terrain to block off one of my objectives, so I can securely hold that without taking too much firepower. And you, and it's it's an alternating system, so you're seeing how he's building his side of the board, too. So if you're like, man, he's really trying to set up a fire lane on my right flank. You can be like, well, <laughs> I got an obscuring train for you, buddy. Boom, that, right that, there. You know, so <laughs> it, it really does kind of give you a little bit of, of options there. Uh, and, I do and, like and that. Seth, you're absolutely correct. And also the, the fact that you have to keep a certain amount of space between pieces of terrain, so you can't just create a giant wall to block off things like knights. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of structure there um yeah I'm, I'm glad so far like i said it's, it's been great i played a game last week two weeks ago using this and i and i absolutely loved it at first i was really going in negative i was like i do not like this concept at all it took a lot of uh pushing for me for pe from people for me to even try it i mean of course reese and yeah. the rest of the guys are like let's do it let's give it a shot i played a game i absolutely loved it and uh yeah so just give it a shot because you know I think it's really important if you're going to go to an FLG event and you're going to play in this system, you really should practice getting a game or two with the system just so you can figure out the kinks of your army. Like, okay, I actually do need kind of an obscuring piece near the center because I'm trying to move my assault units up and I need... So just just give yourself a chance to get used to it. Yeah. Um, but once you get used to it, it you'll be fine. It'll work it is a well. new skill set. It's important, though, that yeah. it can be used mainly to make your side better as opposed to being used offensively it's 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 more of a, a way to make your like make your perfect deployment zone right I mean, yeah. it's, so yeah you're right get some practice i see you maybe making a video set maybe an educational video on how to you know play with player optimized terrain maybe. i could, I, I could probably do that you can um, do it if, if i have a terrain set <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, okay okay that's the important step um but no i, I think it's it's 
certainly <laughs> something if you go into it unpracticed and you don't know what your army needs and you don't know what your opponent's army is going to try to do. It's it's just like deploying your army. If you misdeploy your terrain, just like you misdeploy your army, that can be the game in certain yeah, matchups. So having some practice with it, it will help. Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, uh, you know, as always, Frontline Gaming is willing to pivot and adjust. But right now, with the current rule set that we have from uh, Ninth Edition is and, and the terrain that we currently own and have a lot of, this seems to be the, the, the best solution moving forward. So yep. we, shall, we should have player-optimized terrain in place for the Las Vegas team tournament as well as SoCal. And then from there, we'll reassess moving forward towards New Orleans and LVO. Uh, with that said, guys, no one is required to run uh, their events, whether it's an ITC event or not using player optimized terrain. Um, that's totally up to the TO's uh, choice. Um, so so we do want people to know as a TO running an ITC event, whatever it is, whether it's an RTT, a GT or a major, you can still make that decision on how you want your terrain to be placed. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, Seth, you got any questions on that? No, I'm just I'm excited to, to give it a try out myself. I, uh, you know, I was all We'll get into it, but I was like 100% focused on getting my army ready for Charity Hammer, so I didn't have time to do anything else since about mid-July. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to get back in the room because I am going to the Las Vegas team event, so I need nice. some practice with the system. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to be giving it, a, giving it a shot. It's next month, man. All right, no. guys. Frontline Gaming Network news, people. Uh, Shelby's not in, so you're going to just have to put up with me talking really fast, and I will go through this pretty quickly. But I do want to make sure everyone knows that there was uh, two weeks ago was the Chapter Tactics episode on Orcs, and I listened to it to this morning while I was going for a run, and it was awesome. I mean, of course, that's just, when you listen to it. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's when I listen to most of my podcasts, right? Is out running. But, uh, dude, great episode. Uh, Chapter Tactics guys really, you know, I, I love to see their evolution as a podcast. They're, they're getting better and better and better and i think this orc episode in particular was freaking fantastic i loved it um Upcoming later this week, Grim After Dark is doing their Charity Hammer experience coverage. You know, I mean, I'm sure they'll be talking, yep. you know, they'll have bits and pieces, uh, you know, involving you, Seth. Um, and I think a, a vlog. Fortunately, yes. Yeah, fortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because um, yeah, cause John was there, right? It was John. Yep, John and Danny were there. Oh, both of them were there. Yeah, oh, awesome, Danny awesome. was there and played. We played. We had a grudge match on stream. I gave him a pickle. Oh. He gave me potatoes. <laughs> I don't understand what that means, but okay. Uh, that's Pizza great. Daddy! <laughs> Um, um, well, well, I'm glad that you guys exchanged, um, gifts, edible items. Oh, uh, that's great. Oh, no, mine wasn't <laughs> edible. It was a yodeling pickle. I have no idea what we're talking about at this point. Neither does anyone else. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> well, we also have, um, uh, uh, the Thursday show coming up tomorrow. And of course they're going to be talking about the uh, GW event in Orlando this weekend. Yep. Paul Murphy, one of the Thursday show host is going to be the shoutcaster for the event. One of the main shoutcasters along with Nick, not Uh, so that should be a great episode. So tune in tomorrow night for that. Um, yeah, I, I Thursday shows another one. I, I listen to that every yep. single week, you know, that's always solid stuff. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great kind of preview of, of what to keep an eye on over the weekend because sometimes you know particularly when you got a busy week you know for me like thursday is like all right i almost made it and then you're like what am i gonna do this weekend and they're like this is what's going on this weekend seth and i'm like oh okay that's what i'll pay attention to thanks but dude they also like call some great shots and they give you they insight like who to be watching like i mean i i don't know i think the thursday show is is if i'm gonna listen to one show before an event even if i'm not playing that event like that's the show they give, I don't know, the best coverage there is on any upcoming event. Better than us, I hate to say, but we're really short and brief uh, format. Um, but yeah, so that's coming up tomorrow, so check that out. Seth, why don't you tell people about Charity Hammer? About You were there, you were there, you survived an entire weekend despite eating a lot of hot sauce and getting I no did. sleep. I yeah. did. Why don't you Minimal go sleep, that? extra hot sauce, much pain. Um, all for the children. All so for, the children. For, for those of you that didn't pay attention this past weekend, there was Charity Hammer. This is the third year of Charity Hammer. It's put on by Colin Sherman from the Best in Faction podcast. Um, it was attended by a lot of people. Um, Don, like I said earlier, John, Danny, myself, and Peter, the Falcon, all from the FLG network uh, were there. Um, you had uh, John Lennon, um, Mark Perry, Alex McDougal, Brad Chester, and Nick Nonavati from Art of War, Thomas Bird and Jaime Paris from Tabletop Life. Uh, Bridger was there uh, from Tabletop Titans. Of course, Colin, Chuck, and Mitch were there. Um, JT McDowell was there from Play on Tabletop. Um, so it was just kind of a, a, a stacked list of Wait, how of many people were there? That sounds like there a was lot 32 of... people oh, there. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. a 32 player event. Um, the, the goal of this event was to stream 
for 72 hours straight on three different tables. Um, so we produced a little over 200 hours of content um, in three days. Um, it's all of it. So there was a stream running on uh, Best in Factions YouTube page, Art of Wars YouTube page, and Canhammer. And the the main channel was the Best in Faction one, and that was co-hosted on the FLG uh, network. So you can catch a lot of that stuff if, you, if you're not on the best in faction stuff you can see it all on the flg stuff um the goal was to to raise money uh to get us uh money for child's play which is a charity that donates uh toys and video games to uh children's hospitals um, to try to make that time in those kids lives just a little bit more comfortable um, they even actually now donate employees to hospitals because they found out that if you give a bunch of video game machines to nurses that don't know how to set them up they just get stuck in a closet and never used so they literally started hiring people to go into the hospitals and like set the materials up and show the kids how to use them and help the kids learn to play the games so that's literally someone's job um in total, so the goal was this is the, the background. The goal was twenty thousand dollars. All right. Um, I said on air because some people wanted me to shave my goatee into a mustache that if we hit the stretch goal of twenty five thousand dollars, I'd shave into the mustache. Well, Friday morning I woke up and we were at twenty six thousand dollars. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, dang. guess I'm getting a mustache. <laughs> and by the end of the weekend, we were at thirty eight thousand dollars. Dang. Um, man. And so of course, when we started getting that close, we were like, we really need to get to forty thousand for forty k. Of course. Um, so so uh, Colin decided to leave the donation links up uh, for the rest of the month so you can donate there. If you donate in, in, in uh, chunks of $30, you get entered into raffle tickets for various 40K kits that were given away. Um, but it was a great time. Um, I helped out with, obviously, I was on stream. I did like four games on stream, but then I stream hosted like five or six games. I can't quite remember. It so, sort of blurs together. Um, <laughs> but we, we were literally working like all hours of the day and night. Um, it was a ton of content. I saw a lot of names I'm seeing in chat. I was seeing a lot of them, you know, there, um, you know, like, uh, uh, Kelsey, um, Tamagotchi Express, he sent coffee for us, which was great. Aww. Nurgle Matthew was everywhere donating. Cause that's just what Nurgle Matthew does. He that's was awesome. great. Um, so it was a great time. Um, a really good experience. Great chance to kind of get to hang out with folks. Um, basically imagine like a three day slumber party. Did you make but a no best sleep. friend forever? Did, did you make friendship bracelets? Please tell me you make friendship I kept inviting Bridger to sleep in my bed, but for some reason he said no. <laughs> Too much information. I don't know why. I'm a cuddly guy. I'm a cuddly guy. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it was like it was just a good chance to hang out. And, and I met a lot of the orc players that I know online, like um, Rich Kilton and I basically hung out most of the weekend talking orcs. Um, it was a good time. Uh, John and Danny uh, were there. Um, so the joke is, you know, I was joking about pickles. Well, so I really, you know, you know those squig dice, the yeah, little yeah, rubbery yeah, bouncy yeah, dice. Yeah, yeah. No I one really uses. Wanted, I really wanted to get a set of those because Danny and I's tournament game, because Danny and I got paired into each other on the tournament. Um, we were tr we were going to be playing on stream, so I really wanted to get those bouncy dice just to Jeez, piss them off. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and and it I, it fell through. I, I had a source. It fell through. Um, <laughs> so I, I decided. To, with those I, dice, man? I don't know what. Facebook was doing that day, but I, I when I when I found out that I couldn't get the dice, I was sitting here on the computer and Facebook was like, you know how like Facebook when it hears you talking about something, it's like, did you want to buy this off Amazon? Yeah, um, dude, I don't know what it heard me talking you're pregnant. about. <laughs> yeah, so it was like, do you want to buy a yodeling pickle? And I was mm -hmm. like, how does it know I need a joke gift for Danny? <laughs> And like, sure enough, I was like, it was like 12 bucks. So I bought him a yodeling pickle and I that mean, was his gift. That, and he that, brought me potatoes because he just moved to Idaho. So this was the traditional gift of his people. No, I so mean, we exchanged gifts that. on stream. And that's, so that's beautiful. there was like literally comments at one point in the chat where someone was like, is that a pickle on the table? And we were like, yeah, don't ask about it. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a good time. Everyone was, everyone was having fun. Everyone was pitching in. Um, there were some really great games. Uh, Jaime Paris goes all the way to the finals against John Lennon. Wow. And almost takes him down. He made the boy king bleed for a minute there. I was going to call What was he Joffrey. playing? What was uh, Jaime Paris? He was playing? playing Space Wolves. What? Pure Space Wait, what? Wolves. He took down Brad Chester and Nick Nottavati, both who were running Drakari, and took them down in like style. He took down <laughs> Colin Sherman, who was running the Ultramarine Dreadlist, and like basically beat him in turn one Wait, like who is this guy i'm sorry i who is jaime is he is he just he's, like, so he's part of the tabletop life crew um, okay. over in atlanta um well and and many people in chat were having the same response you were having mm -hmm. until someone pointed out jaime is number 14 overall in the itc okay so he, he knows so he's, play. he's been kicking some butt with space wolves for a while so he did a great job um we had a little orc tournament which is you know earlier you said what is my favorite piece of swag that i've ever gotten yeah 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 well <clears throat> 
I may have won the orc tournament amongst oh, the other orc players. Wow. So I was gifted this trophy that says the goat, <laughs> as you can see, and, and it is an, an actual, actual goat. goat on it. <laughs> so um, I have to return next year to defend my goat trophy uh, of as the greatest orc player of all time. I think I'm going to orcify it because this doesn't say orcs to me. So no, it yeah, we, might, we might jazz it up a little bit, but there's my, my swag from that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, we, we did a hot wings challenge where we just like ate obscene amounts of hot sauce. So if you really want to watch the Falcon cry, he literally cries after multiple hot sauces, but he went all the way to a 6 million Scoville hot sauce. Oh, that's I impressive. tapped out at 2 million. I, I, I did. I knew my ego wasn't that big that I couldn't, I couldn't bow out there. So um, I feel bad for the toilet on site. Um, that's, that's rough. Yeah, there um, was, yeah. The, yeah. I had to, I had to bow out of a stream about 15 minutes before the end <laughs> because there was a, a nature was calling. Emergency. So it was a great time. Uh, it's a great cause. Uh, everything, Thing that you donate goes straight to child's play it's all tax deductible if you need that stuff um it's a it's a great thing and it'd be really cool if we can hit forty thousand. i've been told a certain nick Nadavati may shave his head and beard if we oh. hit 40k for wow. 40k well that's totally worth which it which i think would be hilarious Let me just because as wallet, you really? saw i shaved and like jt mcdowell shaved his beard that he's had for like 10 years um a bunch of other people shaved uh pickles there's a guy named pickles um but just it's it was a good time and you can catch all that on camera all of us getting shaved um mitch and i both left the mustache so we both look like cops yeah um, totally. so we have pictures of mitch and i being cops now <laughs> You know, why not? Just keep it for Halloween. I mean, we're only two months out, so just do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Hey, do we get any uh, things in the chat? Any questions in the chat? No, just a lot of a lot of comments from folks that uh, saw the event and appreciated it. Um, but let's hop into the competitive uh, 40K news, and then we'll hit some listener questions and some rapid fire questions. Sweet, Ooh. sweet. So uh, as you guys may have noticed, uh, there there's still not any... Uh, stat center. So I'm kind of filling in here. So in terms of event results, um, we've got the Summer Slam that was in England. This was won by Matt Robertson playing Sisters, beating oh, nice. out uh, Randy running Eldari on the top table. Notably at wow. this event, there were no Admech players. Wow. They just banned yeah. them entirely. They said no Admech period. Is that what happened? Yeah. Well, no, just no That's one showed up with them. No oh, okay. <laughs> It, it, you know, it might have been some sort of like arms agreement where like yeah. everyone's like, look, <laughs> we got to sign the Geneva Convention of 40K. Exactly. Exactly. No, exactly. no, no nukes out. allowed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Um, there's the Alberta Classic. Uh, this was the only event that used the new Orc Codex and two Orc players did come in first oh, and nice. second, both undefeated. Both were running uh, Free Buddha's Speedwalk style lists. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I would that was not have thought. I thought it would have been golf or maybe snake bite, but wow, cool. Free, free Buddhas can be very strong. I ran those in the orc tournament. The um the the issue that is that unfortunately the the whole list is built around getting a kill, and there's certain armies in the meta like custodes, yeah. death guard, ad mech, yeah, sisters, some space marine builds like dark angels, um, where getting a kill to trigger your plus one to hit can be really hard. So yeah. I, I don't know if that's going to be a, co a a build that lasts in the meta as people learn to counter it. Um, but we'll see. Um, and the last event that kind of bears discussion is the Into the Hellstorm event um, run by Mikey from Hellstorm Gaming. This was won by Alex Harrison um, running Iron Hands, which really oh, makes wow. me feel like we're back in the end of 8th edition for some reason, yeah, saying weird. Alex Harrison is winning stuff with Iron Hands. <laughs> Kind of a blast from the past. Um, he defeated Mark back. um running Death Guard on top table. Now, um, there was some controversy at this event that I think is worth at least discussing um, okay. in the briefest terms. So one of the prominent players there, Manny Chima, was given a zero by the TO in round four for submarining. Now, submarining, for those of you that are unaware, yeah, I don't know what you've been the last week because it's been everywhere. But basically, it's when a player who is winning intentionally scores less points than he could possibly score in order to try to get favorable pairings in future rounds. And, and this, this is nothing new. This is an established uh, tactic for it's, better. Or it's, a lot of players have done this. Um, and it's not just a 40K thing. I mean, literally in the 2012 London Olympics, there were there were badminton teams doing this. Um, you know, this is a very common thing in sports where where not just winning and losing, but actual points scored in the game affects your pairings going into the future. Um, 
I've reached out to, 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 to Mikey. Um, he actually put out a nice statement today um, explaining that he was basically he was aware that Manny was doing this in the first and second round. He debated whether or not um, he warned him in the third round, and then he decided that it really was against the spirit of the game. And potentially it could be defined as angle shooting because you are using the rules as they are to try to get yourself into less experienced players potentially. Um, so he ultimately did yellow card and give a, a, a round loss to Manny, um, knocking Manny out of contention. Now that has kind of generated some conversation um, in in how we as a community might change our pairing process to prevent this type of behavior in the future. Um, and kind of the most common theory that's been thrown around is you take players with identical records and so, like, for instance, normal a normal 40K event right now based on battle points, if Kicker and I are both one win and there, and I'm 90 points and Kicker's 85 points and there's other players that are 90 points and 85 points, I'll get play, paired into the other player that scored 90 points. Kicker will get paired into the other player that scored 85 points. Yep. Um, so that's how players can use their score to manipulate who they pair into. They might go, oh, well, I'm going to only score 60 points, so I get a real uh, maybe softer opponent. Um so the new proposed system is you take players with the same record. So kicker and I are both three and O rather than saying, okay, then we're going to pair by battle points. You say all the three and O people go into a big pot and you randomize who gets paired into who that way yep. players can't, all they can control is their win loss record, which yep. basically there's no event except for like nine round events like uh, LSO where you could take a loss and probably still make the finals. Um, and in the LSO event, yeah, you're taking a risk because you don't know if you take that loss, if you're going to still end up being high enough in the seating um, to, to make it in there. So, um, you know, if you are a top player that wants to try to win it all, then your best option is to win all your games and just deal with the random pairing. So that's what's been proposed by the community. Um, is this something that we think maybe we'll see kind of going down the line with maybe some of the frontline gaming events? Okay, so personally, it sounds it makes sense to me. I am not allowed or at liberty to go into exactly what we're going to be doing in the future, but let's just say this makes sense right now, and uh, right. things are very much being considered. Well, I, I think it's you know this is not a great situation, and and full disclosure, guys, you can go out and check a video out. Manny and Mikey are friends. They actually did a video together today where they explained the situation and explained you know their ideas on how to try to fix the system for the future. Manny's actually, the system I described is what actually Manny is going to run at his own event this weekend. Um, so he's taken this to heart. Um, he's trying to do things correctly. He didn't realize it was going to be such a divisive issue in the community. Um, and so I think it's it's something that's probably been coming for a while in the community, but this was kind of the moment that it all came to light. Um, so and the I'm, format I'm, you just discussed, Seth, seems like a very clean way to handle this, you know? Yes. So cool. Yeah, cool. So, um, all right, let's get into our ITC uh, recap, our score rankings. Not a lot of movement this week. Um, so we're going to kind of run through these real quick. Number five is Colin McDade for the 40K <laughs> competitive track. Number four is Mark Hurdle. Number three is Brad Chester, the old man himself. Number two is Sean Naden. And number one is the boy who wished to be king, John Lennon. Um, hopping right. over to the 40K hobby track, we've got number five, Rick Hill. Number four, Marshall Peterson, who you can check out on Grim After Dark from last night. Uh, number three, Noah Bedome. Number two, JT Steger. And number one, Lee Harris. Uh, hopping down to the AOS competitive track, we've got uh, Gavin Greiger in number five, Ramon Silva in number four, Nicholas Branham in number three, uh, Anthony Tretinelli in number two, and Noe Aquino. I'm trying to pronounce that better. Some people left YouTube comments saying that the, the E was emphasized. So Noe <laughs> Aquino, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, get in touch Sorry. with me. But yeah, geez. Yep. Um, and in the AOS hobby track, again, not a whole lot of movement. Um, we got Matt Abbott in number five, Will Reeves in number four, Chris Hernandez in number three, Scott Reed in number two, and once again, Noe Aquino in number one. You got to love that though, right? A guy yeah. that is not only the you know top in the competitive track, but also the top in the hoppy track. Like that's just badass, man. You know, yeah. applause to you. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Seth, I wanted to give you an update regarding the Kill Team rankings. Yeah. Uh, just just because Kill Team, you know, we used to always cover the Kill Team rankings in the segment right here. Obviously, Kill Team right now is in a huge transition. Uh, new, new edition will be coming out and we'll uh, be 
potentially we're going to see how, how that edition rolls and what people think about it and how competitive it is. But if it's pretty competitive and people like it, we will be uh, hopefully announcing those rankings moving forward towards uh, 2022. Yeah, I'm excited with a new kill team system. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I had to answer a work text. Work. Uh, you, you, you're still on call, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not supposed to be. And that's why I was like, hey, I'm not on call. You're calling the other doctor tonight. You're basically Ace Ventura kind of. Sort of. Kind sort of. of yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Let's know. just go with it. Yeah. Let's go with it. Cool. All right. You know. So <laughs> well, let's fire off those rapid fire questions and chat. We're doing good on time tonight. So if chat, you got some questions for, for Kicker or I, fire away and we'll get to those. Um, just don't fire too fast so I can keep up with them. Uh, so uh, Kicker, you want to take the first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All let's right. get that clock going. Ready? Right. Is the clock ready? Are we going? Oh, it's we already going? running. Oh, it's, oh, it's uh, already running. Gary from New Zealand asks, when FLG will come to New Zealand to host an event? Oh, okay, guys. Yes, we do want to expand outside of the USA, but nothing until after COVID has been taken care of or figured out. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be a, an old... But no, seriously, though, that is something we're really like considering. I don't know <laughs> if New Zealand is going to be the first country we, uh, we move outside to, but uh, that's it's something very much... It's dude, it's really far away. I, I'm, I'm happy to go, Gary. Story. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh Seth, Trevor from Florida ask in 40k's ninth edition, what is the ruling if each player must use a stratagem in the at the exact same time? Who must go first and or does each player have a chance to respond? So so I, I priority goes to the player whose turn it is. So if Kicker and I both have stratagems that play in the same moment, say play during your charge phase or something like that, or play during your opponent's charge phase, if it's my turn, it's my choice in which order they activate. So if I want, if I want, if like say the stratagem the Kicker is going to play is going to affect whether or not I play mine or not, I might say, go ahead. You're, this is your chance to play it. If you don't, then I'm going to play mine. He can't. It, if it's not your turn, you don't get to decide what order they go in. So. Nice. Nice, um, nice. That's kind of the simple solution for it. All right, sweet. All right. Josh from Connecticut asks, I'm currently on the LVO 40K champs wait list. Will more spots be opened up? And if so, when? All right, Josh. Well, hey, man, uh, a lot of people are on the wait list. Yes, the LVO is totally sold out for the 40K champs. Uh, I mean, we're at 1,100 uh, 1, players. We do think we should be able to add a 200 more players or so um we're waiting to finish doing the layout which we're working on this month once we do the layout and we see exactly how many tables we can fit into the the space we're going to release those tickets and it will be a you know a, it'll be a mad dash to go get them uh, of course the people on the wait list will get first dibs uh so <laughs> look, yeah right so later uh, this uh, month uh, early uh, next month yeah. oh we're dying okay just go just go i got a question for you got it <laughs> really important right. seth to kicker Oh wait! Oh, Seth, I gotta ask you. Sorry, I, I gotta ask this one because this is this is really relevant. Some dude asked if Seth could buff one orc unit, but that had to then nerf one. Which would those be? Sorry, because you know. Uh, so nerf one and buff one. I yes. think the nerf. Um, if I were to nerf one, I think you could probably nerf. Um, probably the the war bikes. War bikes are actually really good for their points, like stupid good and stupid durable, and like. When they get in half range, each war bike puts out ten strength five shots. Like it's ridiculous. I had a unit of war bikes this weekend fire hundred and eight shots. Jeez, it's yeah. a lot. Brutal. So I think they could probably take a little bit of nerf. And then if I nerf them and I got something in return, I yeah. totally want to boost up flash gets because I have twenty really? of them and I want them to be great. Really? I thought it would yeah. have been like the new runt herd character dude who yeah. just seemed like a total whiff. You know, I, I, I want my flash kits to be amazing. <laughs> I want to blow space marines off the table with obscene amounts of DACA. So. <laughs> All right. Hey, Seth, what do we got in the uh, the chat? Do we have any questions? Yeah. Oh, crap. We had some. I've lost. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me expand the page. Um, uh, Tomodagachi Express says, well, yeah, what was your most memorable vacation moment Ooh. for both of us? So, Kicker, what vacation was your most memorable moment? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I just came back from a vacation, and I and, and I mean, like, is this gonna be 40k relevant? I don't know. No, um, most but, memorable moment. So, like, I'm kind of like a nature hippie kind of fanatic of being outdoors, and I just like literally five days ago, I was taking my 14 month old son for his first like legit hike in the middle of nowhere, and uh, me, my wife, my son, we were in the middle of a herd of bison, and it just felt totally badass. Like we were totally in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by bison, and they were all farting and grunting around us, and it was just it was beautiful. Um, 
Yes. Sorry. Kick your kicker water them off with farts. Hey, yeah, right. Well, and then my wife turns to me and is like, this is just amazing, right? And I'm like, yes. And now I totally want to go back home and make an army of squig riders uh, and paint them up to look like Dyson. Uh, she's like, get okay. out. Like, I hate you. <laughs> like, you just yeah. ruined this moment. Um, but uh, what, what about you, Seth? Where, where are we at with uh, sweet, loving, wonderful vacation moments? Um, well, like this past vacation, um, I don't, I think I've, you know, I've shared a lot of those stories already. Yeah. 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 No um, more charity. Hammer. <laughs> yeah. So non, non charity hammer related vacation. <laughs> Is there anything else? I haven't taken a non charity or non 40 K <laughs> related vacation in quite a while. Um, hmm. I don't know. I got a good one. I'll have to get back to you on that right. one. Tamagotchi right. express. So, um, I think that's about it for tonight. Uh, <laughs> do you have any final thoughts for the night kicker? Uh, no, man. I, I, I just, re I really missed you. And I, of course I, I miss Shelby you, and I'm glad to be back guys. I'm glad to have you back because boy, howdy, do you bring the energy when I'm about boy. to fall asleep at the mac microphone for the third week in a row. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be back. Uh, Seth, do you have any, uh, last words of wisdom for, for tonight? I think that's it. Um, thank you so much for joining us, folks. We really hope you enjoyed episode number. I can't remember. <laughs> have a great week and see you next Wednesday. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>